hard up for funding. They wanted to see and reach out to Blockbuster. Well, Blockbuster looked at them and said, ha, 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 we ain't doing that. That's worthless and whatever. And look who took over now. And there you have it. (laughs) This is true. And while we're on that subject, let's have a message from our sponsors. Hello, America. I'm Renee Fleming. I've sung opera all over the world and performed in some of the most historic venues. But today I'm lending my voice to the 16 million kids in America struggling with hunger. Every year, billions of pounds of excess food go to waste, while one in five children may be left without enough food for a meal. But it doesn't have to be this way. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks helps to collect surplus food and give hope to children and families in need. But they can't do it alone. Lend these kids your voice by speaking up and supporting Feeding America and your local food bank. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. And we are back. You are listening to Kiss My Keister on Society Bites Radio. Thanks for tuning in. We have covered a lot of different topics today. We've talked about COVID. We've talked about standing in lines. We've talked about just about everything that has COVID written all over it. So if you have comments, concerns, or you'd just like to put your two cents worth in, why don't you give us a call at 941-447-9965. Leave us a message. Let us know what you think or send us an email to program director at societybytesradio.com and bytes is spelled b-y-t-e-s back to you joe so katie i know we talked about covid and all this other stuff but i want to hit two different topics that have to do with this and i'm just it's interesting okay one is what do you think about halloween do you think halloween is going to be in your out this year Oh, I think it'll definitely be in, because this is going to be the excuse for mask explosion. I believe that they're going to invent masks for Halloween that have, maybe it's only half a face and you have to make up the rest of it, but I think they're going to have Halloween masks. I think we go back to the 1970s, like little smack masks. Uh (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they're... There, there are people saying that Halloween may be canceled because social distancing, you can't go out, you can't do this and whatever. But then they're also wondering with the racial uh, things that are going on, what's acceptable with costumes. So it's interesting to see what's going to happen this year. People can put a bucket of candy on the front porch, leave their light on. I did it. I've done it more than once. So you're the person who I go to your house and I just dump the bucket in my thing and I walk away. Actually, that's never happened to me, knock on wood. But I can tell you that the trick-or-treaters that do go out, they're the little ones. You know, there's a few teenagers that go out, but not as many as there used to be. And nowadays... They have the in-school programs or the church programs that sort of replace the door-to-door trick-or-treat. We used to take pillowcases. Those were our bags. We didn't have the cute little pumpkins or anything like that. We actually had a pillowcase. Mom actually made our costumes. So we had a good time on Halloween. We'd come home, empty the Halloween candy out. Mom would pick what she wanted out of it. And whatever was left, we got. (laughs) That's true. And did they use the excuse, let me check your candy for pins and needles? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that was just an excuse for candy. I know. It's true, though. But, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, my mother had her favorites. Oh, I'm sure. I, I love my Kit Kats and Reese's peanut butter bars and all this. Yeah, peanut butter cups and all this other stuff. But I also had I, – I started off like the little plastic bags and pumpkins, but I migrated to the – to the uh, uh, the pillowcases, but I used to yeah. have two or three stuffed in there. So when one got full, I just went back to the house, dropped one off, and I still had the other two, and I went to town. You know what I'm going to miss are the Halloween parties. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because those were fun. Those were a lot of fun. You could go and 
just socialize with your friends, make funny looking foods for Halloween, funny looking punches. You know, it was a good time. And I think this year's just going to suck. As long as they social distance, I will be at a party. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes, I know, because you are quite the party monster. I'm, you network more than anybody I've ever met in my life. Yeah, I do. And actually, to tell you the truth, I was at a uh, photo shoot today, and someone's looking at me. They're like, I know you from somewhere. I'm like, you probably do from networking. <laughs> but... And then again, they could be listening to your shows, so yeah, you know, never discount that. This is true. This is true. I'm not going to go anywhere by that. But. No, and you will find Joe on Socially Joe on Society Bites Radio. Tune in one day. I know. It's very interesting. I'm not going to get into that too much, but just listen. You'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. Anyway, um, I thought this was very hit to home with the epidemic and all this other stuff, but... Um, risk health or lose money. Some couples that have already booked their weddings and events, as we know, are going to lose their money if they don't you know, have the wedding. And now some people are thinking, do they have the wedding and try to risk it and have certain family members? Or they just say, screw my $5,000 and I walk away or more, plus minus. Hmm. I don't know. I, I think that the wedding should be about the two people and not all the guests anyway. Uh, were my parents still alive, of course I would want them to be there. But that's a social distancing issue as well. Other than family, I don't really think anybody needs to be at your wedding. That's a private affair. That's something that should be more personal. And in the year of covid I think it's a necessity. Well, that was the big thing is like, if you remember, especially um, as it grew in the 90s and to early 2000s, people wanted more grandeur weddings and oh, all this gosh, other stuff yeah. that they want to have. And they book these big venues and all these other things. And one of my family members, um, second whatever, twice removed, not same names, but anyway, they had a wedding. They had a nice venue and all this other stuff I couldn't attend. But they didn't. They invited more friends than their family to the event, which was weird. But they did. So uh, just interesting. Um, but that's what people want now. They want these big venues and all sorts of stuff. And I'm going to let you know a secret. If if and when I get married, I want to have a Halloween masquerade ball on Halloween. That's going to be epic. I'm getting an invitation, right? As long as you bring the beer and the hot dogs. <laughs> Well, we'll have to see about that. Ah, oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Bring you a Bigfoot meatloaf. <laughs> or a giant wasp that's two feet, whatever. That's right. It's something there. That's right. I'm sure I could come up with something. But I think I like this because this is a great positive note. Is majority of Americans say spontaneous, uh, spontaneity and um, with adventures are the best... Uh, summer plans to do during this whole thing, which is great. Uh, isn't spontaneity what got us in this boat in the first place? Well, when they're when when I read the article more, they were talking more um, social distancing. So, going on a boat, fishing, mm-hmm. going out in your backyard or to a campground, camping away from people, going on a hike, going doing like little things that are away from people those are the trips even if you watch tv now which i know you you do in your dvr but you bypass the commercials and you probably don't see it but they talk about um in one of the car commercials they talk about remember how good it was to ride in a car ride with your family just jump in a car and go that's what they're trying to tell people just go on a local car ride down this road like maybe three miles and go see the biggest ball yarn or something like that Obviously, if you try to cross the state border, you'll be stopped and say, hey, turn around. you got to go quarantine for two weeks. Well, you know you've gone too far when you get to the state line. <laughs> we, we joke that we have to have borders, and now we have borders that you have to quarantine for two weeks. And there you have it. See, that's Florida on a tank full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I like this because it kind of gives people ideas that they didn't think outside the box because what was the one thing that people did at at the beginning of this whole thing they started sitting down at a dinner table they started talking they started cooking until they found out who their children were (laughs) (laughs) this is true i'm sorry but think about this a minute 
people who've never had their kids at home since they were school age now have to deal with them. That means the terrible twos just turned into the terrible teens. Now you have to deal with a teenager that doesn't want to follow the COVID rules because they don't think it's important. This is true. And I've actually seen both sides of the coin on that where some teens are very... um, Introverts and extroverts. A little more self-conscious. Yeah, the introverts want to stay in more. They don't really care. Like, I get to stay at home. I get to play my games. I get to do whatever. Extroverts are like, almost like me, where I'm like, I don't want to stay in anymore. I want to go out. I want to walk around. I want to do something. I don't care what I'll do, but as long as it's safe, I will make things work and say, hey, do you want to go ride a bike? Let's go ride a bike around the neighborhood. You're over there, six feet. Yeah. Well, think about this a minute. What COVID has done has taught all of us that we can do house arrest. It's okay. We will survive. So that makes me wonder, instead of putting them in prison, are they just going to give everybody an ankle bracelet and say, don't leave home without it? So what, so what you're saying is we're going to a DUI ankle bracelet that's going to go on there, and the moment you get off, it alarms everything? Oh, the minute you walk out the door, it'll just, and you'll have uh, your parole officer in the driveway. <laughs> Funny thing is, God bless my grandma on my mom's side. She had passed away, but... Years ago, when she passed, and we had, or not before she passed, but um, when she moved into an, uh, an over 55 community, we had to clean out her old house, which was owned by her and my grandfather. And downstairs in their basement, it took us like a few days to go through and decipher everything. She would have bundles of paper towels, toilet paper, canned food. It was almost like if there was a nuclear bomb that was going to happen. She was ready. She was ready. And not only I don't think that was a mentality, but I think it was also a mentality of she grew up in the Depression. So you're very limited what you had. So you had to make sure you had enough there. So if something were to happen, you didn't have to worry about it. Yeah, my dad was that way. He was, um, I won't say a survivalist, but he would have made a good one. Always had jugs of water stacked up in the garage. And I mean gallons, not just one or two either. It was cases of water. Yeah. And he would buy, you know, 50 pounds of rice or 50 pounds of beans just to make sure that we had something to eat if we couldn't leave the house. Wow. Uh, They grew up in the Depression. They had nothing. They didn't want us to have nothing. And here we are going through another great depression. Of toilet paper. And Lysol. And hand sanitizer. Don't forget hand sanitizer. Don't forget hand sanitizer. (laughs) Yeah. It wasn't about standing in line for a loaf of bread. Now we're standing in line for toilet paper. No, I'm standing in line for potty pads at Walmart. (laughs) Oh, my God. There you go. Full circle. Yeah, but nobody's giving it to me. I still have to pay for it. This is true. This so, is true. you know, there is a little bit of a difference here. Yes, we're going to put you in a depression. Yes, we're going to let you have things, but you also have to pay for them. This is true. Uh, well, that it, it, real fast, I think what's really good is we were talking about store chains and all this other stuff. And some people were uh, basically, um, what's it called? People were basically uh, closing down stores because they couldn't afford their rent anymore and whatnot. But I thought this was very positive that the grocery chain Aldi is defying this pandemic, and they've uh, announced that they're going to open 70 new stores uh, in the western U.S. by the end of this year, while other retailers have kind of fallen to the wayside. So I know they do groceries, so they are um, essential business, so... Well, not only are they essential, but I I noticed the last time, and I shop at Aldi's quite a bit because that's where I buy my wine. Well, where else can you get a bottle for two and a half dollars? Come on. Uh, I can get five dollars at another chain, but I'm not going to do that. Now, I have to tell you, though, I was very, very disappointed to find out that they are rationing their wines. You can only have two of any one flavor. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. Why are they rationing wine? I don't know. Maybe they're afraid they're going to miss something. <laughs> I had to take my roommate and have her put some in hers just so that I could get out of the store with what I needed. 
<laughs> this kind of reminds me of the episode of Family Guy where Peter dresses up as different people and he goes up and says, free sample. Uh-huh. Free sample. You just have to go in with a different disguise and be like, hi, I'm here to buy two bottles of wine. Hi, I'm here to buy two bottles of wine. <laughs> I think they'd probably call some. 